If you travel as far east as you can go in our southwest and southeast regions, you ultimately run into the Atlantic Ocean and some fantastic fishing opportunities. We're going to introduce you to some of those opportunities on this week's episode and a place you may not have heard of. You will hear about it in the next half hour because Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air right now. It's time for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. That is a beautiful green marsh out there with lots of canals and trails running through it. And swimming around in that water are spotted sea trout or speckled trout, flounder, redfish, and lots of other inshore saltwater species. This is the Mecca, the inshore fishing destination and vacation hotspot known as Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. We've traveled a long way to do a little inshore fishing here, and we're gonna be joined in the Mako Pro Skiff 21 by Captain Inglis Glover, who does many of our fishing reports in our Southeast region. This is gonna be a lot of fun and a great experience for me that I've been looking forward to for a long time. And while we're out doing that, we're taking you fishing for your local fishing and lake reports from our expert team of insider reporters. Hey, glad you're along with us for this week's episode. Let's get it all started back at the FSN studios with your weekend planner. According to this lunar tables, this should be an outstanding weekend to go fishing. Overall, both days are forecast to have excellent conditions with peak daylight action starting in the afternoons at 219 on Saturday and 314 on Sunday. Expect the sun to rise at 712 and set at 730. And Friday night will showcase a full moon, so evenings should be bright. We'll be right back with all the latest fishing reports from around the area. And I'll return on the Ask the Pro with Bassmaster Angler, Dean Rojas. Stay with us. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. Motor guide trolling motors, because accuracy matters. Nitro performance fishing boats, champions aren't born, they're made. And Fox Sports Outdoors is driven by Fort Worth Nissan and Lone Star Toyota. Fish on. Got there we go. Let's see what this is. I can't tell if it's a trout or a red. Looks like a nice one, whatever it is. Come on, Stay on there, baby. Get him. Oh, oh that's a big a monster. Get trout. him. Net him, net him, net him. Got him. That Got him. Big trout. trout. We caught a monster. That a boy. Holy cow. Look at this, big daddy. Oh, wow. Man. Look at this trout. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> oh, what a hit! Oh, baby! We have caught a giant monster Merle's Inlet trout <laughs> right off the bat. Dude, look at this. Look how fat this Ooh. fish is. Oh, man. Oh, golly. I cannot believe that just happened. Oh, boy. Well, let me tell you. Let me situate you. We've made it out. Come over here and sit by me so, so they All can right, see buddy. you, too. And uh, Whoa! We've made it out, and we just got out. The sun's just coming up over the top of the clouds. And uh, Captain E. Hey, buddy. English Glover. He is our insider reporter for the southeast region of our viewing area. And he also hosts a few of our episodes as well. And we're in his home territory right here. And uh, we've made it out. And we'll tell you a lot about what we're doing and where we are. But let's get this fish back in the water. Talk about Merle's Inlet a little bit. Tell us a little bit about what can happen here. Well, like most in the southeast, uh, the, our inlet's very small, though. We, we're only probably about two miles at our widest point and five miles long. Um, very, a lot of boaters here. We're, we found a little area we're trying to get away from traffic, but we've got black drum, red drum, sheep's head, uh, redfish, speckled trout. We got it all here. There's so many things to do here, uh, but there's a lot of traffic. So we, we know we found an area to get away, get away from all the traffic, and there's a ton of fish in here. We got a great fishery here. Well, there's also some near shore reef fishing. When the wind is calm, you can get outside, take some live bait out there, catch flounder and Spanish mackerel, king mackerel, cobia, lots of different things outside yep. the inlet here if you can get out. We're gonna tell you a lot more about that, but right now we're gonna get back to fishing, see what else can happen here while it's early, get you started with some fishing and lake reports from your local area. 
Hi folks, this week's Lone Star Lakes is brought to you again by the Brecklin Ranch. Now the folks at Brecklin have spent a lifetime both managing ranches and hunting in Texas, and they could think of no better way to honor their family than to share their knowledge and experience with you to tailor your hunting adventure in Texas to be just what you want it to be. Book your next hunt with the folks at Brecklin Ranch. Now this week we're going to start in the western portion of our state at Lake Allen Henry just outside Lubbock where the bass fishing has been pretty good. You'll want to start your morning very early about halfway back in the creeks. Take a creek like Gobbler for example, go about halfway back and start working your top water baits like your poppers and your buzz baits out towards the mouth of the creek. When you get to the mouths of the creek, start using those medium and deep diving crankbaits in your shad colors, your crawfish colors along the rocks that line the mouth of the creeks. Be sure your crankbaits are getting down and hitting those rocks because it's when they bounce off the rocks that you'll be catching your fish. Now over at Lake Palestine they've had good catches of crappie around the brush piles and the boat docks using of course your crappie jigs and minnow rigs. Mark three or four brush piles, catch a few fish, move on to the next one. You'll have a full day's fishing at Lake Palestine for crappie. That's been this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by the folks at Brecklin Ranch with trophy whitetails, axis, and more. Check out Brecklin Ranch for your next hunting adventure. Now let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks. This week's report is brought to you by Port Aransas on Mustang Island, the fishing capital of Texas, where anglers enjoy pristine bays, estuaries, 18 miles of surf, and the deep blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Plus the local restaurants will even cook your catch come sundown come fish and play Texas Island style. For more information, visit portaransas.org. Well, more of the same as summer holds on to the Texas coast. The surf and short rigs continue to be good options when conditions allow. The jetties are seeing an increased variety of fish. Specks, bull, redfish, sheep's head, black drum, Spanish mackerel, and sharks await. Now, Chocolate Bay and West Galveston Bay continue to be good choices to drift for specks and chasing redfish near shorelines. West Matagorda's guts and grass bars are holding fish. Cedar Bio continues to impress both inside and out. Estes Flats southward to the Corpus Christi Ship Channel has been good for specks early and redfish later in the morning. The topwater bite is getting hotter. The grass flats along the Laguna Shores is also holding some good trout. Out of Port Isabel, South Bay, and Gas Wells, a solid bite for trout is occurring. At the causeways, hard fighting and good eating mangrove snapper are adding to the mix. This weekend, Saturday has a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides. Sunday is a three tide day with two high tides and just one low. I'm Bill Olson, and I'll see you on the coast. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're just outside Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. And as you can see, the terrain around us and the stability of the camera has changed a lot. We've actually made it outside the inlet, out into the Atlantic Ocean. We're on some artificial reefs out here. We're with Captain Inglis Glover. And I'm gonna roll in some video from our Lawrence HDS-12 Gen 3 unit. The left side of the screen, you're gonna see that structure on the bottom on the traditional 2D. The right side is the scan, the structure scan down scan image, but uh, what are we looking at, English? What we got here on, on this reef is Paradise Reef. Um, you got a lot of concrete structure here, some old bridges, um, different things of that nature. Uh, DNRs put them here, our South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, as well as some fishing interest groups. Uh, we've got some armored personnel carriers out here, but it creates a great environment for these fisheries. It's close to shore. The live bottoms that we would have to fish, other than that, would be 14, 15 miles offshore. So we, we fish in here, we've got great fish, king mackerel, Spanish mackerel. It's a great place for cobia and huge flounder, gold flounder this time of the year. Now you're looking at some video right now of a flounder that we did catch. Now, unfortunately, we had a little problem with our video, I'm sorry, with our audio. And so we didn't have any audio with this catch, but you're looking at a, a catch of a gulf flounder that uh, Inglis caught a little earlier. And uh, this is not a big one by any stretch, but it is a much better flounder than you can catch most of the time inside the shallower water inside the inlet, right? It is, it is. Typically the fish out here average uh, a lot larger than what you're gonna catch back in the, in the backwaters. But 
I mean, you can have great days in there in the inlet and great days out here, slow days here, slow days here, it doesn't matter. But typically, your larger flounder on average are going to come off this reef. All right, that gives you a little taste of what the outside looks like. We're going to get out of here and go back inside and try some different kinds of fishing. But right now, we get you fishing in lake reports from your local area where you live. Hey friends, Cajun Phil here with your Fox Louisiana Outdoor Report. And I tell you what, it is an outdoor report this week. We got most of our guys, of course, are out there uh, fishing, but we got a couple of guys, they're out there gator hunting. We also have a couple more that are teal hunting. So it's a great week here to be in Southwest Louisiana. It has been one of the best weeks I have seen in a long time. Matter of fact, 10 days in a row now, our guys have been slam dunking the big old redfish. Not a whole lot of trout, but every once in a while, the boats are coming in with 10, 20, 25 trout. A few flounder starting to show up, but I tell you what, every day, two, three, four boats go out, and they almost all catch their limit each and every day. Yesterday, we had one boat that was one shy, one boat was two shy, the other boats, they had their 20. Over at Shell Beach, Captain Charlie Thomason, he's catching lots of redfish right now. Almost all of his are coming off of plastics. He's got two or three boats each and every day. They're catching lo lots of redfish. And then if you want big, giant, monster redfish, Captain Mike Finette down in Venice, Louisiana. Mike stroking them big ones. I'm telling you, my arms can't even get that much on the screen right here. That's how big his big old redfish he's catching down in Venice. And by the way, if you want something offshore, well, Josh Howard, Captain Josh Howard down in Venice, he's catching lots of big old tuna right now. And he says, Cajun, it's a good month to do it. And he's going to do it all month long. So right now it's a good time to go down to Venice if you want some tuna. You got one? Yeah, I got one here. All right. Fish on. There we go. Little flounder. Little one. Now he's actually a keeper. He's about 15 inches, but. There you go. All right, well, we've changed again. And Inglis, why don't you explain what we're doing now? We keep changing up on these people just to uh, show everybody the different diversity of the fishery here but what, what's this kind of fish in here well what we're doing right now is uh, this is huntington beach state park one of our beautiful state parks and these are the jetties that come out of merle's inlet and we're fishing right up on the beach here where the bait's getting trapped in this corner and these flounder lay in here feeding on them on these changing tides and you know we're, we're fishing right up on the edge of those rocks those fish are going to be right up there that's another nice flounder. We'll let him go get bigger. All right, well, that shows you another kind of fishing here available out of Merle's Inlet. I'll tell you, the diversity here is just incredible. Stay with us. We're coming right back to South Carolina right after this. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Tracker Boats. It's more than just a boat. It's a tracker. Costa sunglasses. See what's out there. Mercury Marine, official outboard of Fox Sports Outdoors. And Lowrance Electronics. Find. Navigate. Dominate. Yeah, that's a better one there. That's a good pull right there. Let's see what I got. It's a good fight. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Come in that net. All right. That would be a keeper flounder if we were keeping them today. Yep, it sure would be. This is the main jetty system right on the mouth of Merle's Inlet. It protects the actual inlet on the inside with all those expensive, fancy boats they've got in there. What happens here? Uh, English said is that these flounder will move in here where all these waves are crashing and it's pinning bait fish up against that jetty. And so what we're doing is got a little Carolina rig, we've got a little small mullet and we're throwing it in there and letting it drift right along the edge of those rocks. And if you can see here, that would just be a good keeper flounder for you right yes, there. Got to be 14 inches long for you to keep them here. We're not keeping them today, but uh, We'll let that one go back. Watch this in this clear water. This is gin clear water in here. There you go. <laughs> so like right that. to the bottom. <laughs> English, uh, tell me right quick, uh, th these flounders stay here all the time or do they just come when, when the wind's out of a certain direction or on a certain tide or what? You know what? You know, like I was telling you about the uh, it being, you, I, you were laughing at how calm it is right here. We, we got some waves coming through, but actually this is pretty calm. But if you got that wind coming out of the south or, or off the east, um, typically it pushes bait 
and gets everything back in here and they just stack up in here. And you also can catch some rat red, some smaller red fish in here, but typically those flounder will get in here if they lay up along that structure, just like they would out on the reef or in the inlet, they'll lay along this structure and what we're doing is working these mullet right through those areas. All right, well, just a different kind of fishing. I tell you, there's just so many different ways you can catch fish here. It is just dynamite. Let's get you some more fishing and lake reports from your local area. Hey, I hope you have a chance to check out at least one of these two lakes. One is Lake Tim Killer. There's some really good early morning and late day schooling bass activity going on at Tim Killer. Main Lake Points, some shad activity on top, and then have rigged a topwater bait that you can cast a long way, like a Zara Spook Jr. or maybe a Chug Bug. Another good bait option for those schoolers is a smaller spinner bait, like a quarter ounce size, double wheel leaf blade, and for tin killer in particular, go with a more transparent skirt killer on it. Long cast with a spinner bait, reel it back just under the surface, but that really works well for school and bass activity at tin killer and most of our clear water lakes right now. The other lake is Lake Eufaula. Good reports coming in there for crappie around the bridge pillars. Lots of bridge pillars in that highway 69, highway 9, triangle area, those are good options. Hit those pillars, start down about 12 to 15 feet, adjust up and down accordingly until you find out what depth they are. Once you know that depth, go around all those bridge pillars, you can really dial in, catch good numbers of crappie and some nice ones on Lake Eufaula right now. The other thing to report on is that just recently they let out a big flow of water through Uluga. So when that water starts to settle back down here in the few days ahead, that can be a really good choice fishing in some of those holes right below the dam on Uluga. You can catch them there, you can catch them tin killer, you can catch them when you fall, but you can't catch them if you don't go. Eat it, baby. Something's eating it. Got him. Got one. Let's see what this is. Feels, feels small. But it feels like a flounder. Yep, little one. Another little one. All right, well, we got fish working in here anyway. <laughs> pretty much one after the next ever since we pulled in here. <laughs> some small ones, some a little bit better. And that one goes right there. Right, slapped it right in the camera. One interesting thing is that uh, you can see people walking up and down this jetty. You can actually walk out here and you don't have to have a boat. You can come into State Park and uh, walk. Now it's a long walk, a couple of miles, but you can walk out here and actually have a chance to catch some of these flounder that we're catching right here. It's called Huntington State Park right here. Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. You got Ooh, him? Oh, yeah. Hey, he's little. Little one? Yeah, feels like a flounder though. Of course, with flounder, you never know till you get them into the boat. There you go, that's not I, I not, mean, not another keeper. Yep, there we go. There we go. Yep, he hit that thing as soon as I got it away from the rocks. Beautiful fish right there. All right, and then which species is this? This is going to be your southern flounder, your southern flounder. And how do you know? In summer, it's just a multitude of white spots all over them. Okay. See all the white, lighter colored spots? Three different species of flounder. That's right. And the gulf ones all out there on the reefs. Okay, well, we've got stuff working out here. Showed you a couple of three different ways that you can fish here at Merle's Inlet. What a great place. That one's going back. We'll be back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Be sure to join Fox Sports Outdoors again next week, Thursday night. Or catch the repeat airing Saturday morning at 8. And you can always watch the latest episode in full HD on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Plus, catch up on all past episodes by clicking the archive button. And see lots of how-to and product videos by clicking the how-to button. Also, stay up to date with the latest fishing news, videos, and photos by clicking the follow button on our Twitter feed. And get lots of that same info by clicking the like button on our Facebook page. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Lose, fueled by passion, driven by innovation. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. And Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for the Ask the Pro question. This week, Sid wants to know, how many rod and reel setups should I keep on my boat deck? 
We recruited professional angler Dean Rojas for an answer. That's a question I get asked all the time and it's a great one because you know for me as a professional I, I have an endless amount of rods and reels but for the weekend angler, for somebody who's going out on a Saturday afternoon or fishing a club tournament on Sunday morning, it's something that you need on the on the front of your deck is about five or six rods and you always like to throw things that are conducive to the style of fishing that you like to throw whether it be a reaction bait or you like to pitch or flip or throw a Carolina rig and having five or six rods up there uh, on the front deck uh, that way you can change throughout the day and kind of figure out what the fish want and so forth so I think no more than six rods on the deck if you get any more up there up there it becomes cumbersome you start kicking them you start stepping on them and that's never a good thing with rods so uh, keep that in mind keep it simple six rods is all you need. Thanks Dean. If you have a question for one of the anglers, visit our website, follow the Ask the Pro link on the right side of the page, and send it in. Now one lucky viewer wins a new pair of shades on the Costa Catch of the Week. Hey everybody, we've got the boat loaded back at Merle's Inlet on dry ground, and it's time right now for someone to win a free pair of Costa sunglasses in this week's Costa Catch of the Week contest. He is Brian Starling of McKinney, Texas, showing a nine pound, eight ounce largemouth bass he caught it at Lake Madisonville, Texas. If you'd like to be our next winner, just go to the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com, follow the instructions in the Costa Catch of the Week area on the right side of the homepage, and you could be our next winner. And you can see all of the Costa frame and lens styles on their website by going back to the front page of our site and clicking on the Costa logo. There you'll see all of the 580 polycarbonate and glass lenses in all the different shades and colors, and all of the frame styles, including the one I was wearing on this week's episode, it's called Prop. Next up on the Academy Right Stuff, it's the right gear to catch speckled trout, flounder, redfish, or any of the inshore saltwater species like we caught here at Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. It begins with the Luz TP1 Speed Stick Inshore Saltwater Spinning Rod Series. It's the white colored rod built specifically for this style fishing the microwave guide system, the wind grips, and I've got it matched with the loose speed spin tournament metal spinning reel and spooled with Strin fluorocast fluorocarbon line for the super clear water here. As far as the baits and lures are concerned, you'll need two different sizes of dog walking topwater style cigar baits for early morning speckled trout fishing, a little smaller size bone color on the right, a little larger size on the left. For the flounder fishing and red fishing, you'll need a simple Carolina rig with a three quarter ounce lead weight, a barrel swivel, an 18 inch leader, and a little small flounder hook. Some of us live our lives with a little devil on one shoulder and the little angel on the other. The little devil whispers in one ear, it's too late. You've made too many poor choices, too many mistakes. You're too far gone. Why don't you just give up? The angel on the other shoulder whispers in the other ear, Today's a new day. You can make a fresh start. It's never too late. Keep going. I'm here to tell you the truth. There's a God who loves you unconditionally, and no matter what's in your past, what's happened to you, it is never too late. There's always hope, and that's the best news I can give you for today. Hey, we had a great time today fishing with Captain Inglis Glover here at Merle's Inlet, South Carolina, including catching that great big old fat speckled trout early this morning on a topwater. If you'd like to book a charter trip or a guide trip to go fishing here at Merle's Inlet, you can contact Captain Inglis Glover at the information you see on your screen. From South Carolina, till next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.